Hello everyone, welcome to yet another lecture series on basics of electrical engineering. In this video, we are going to talk about behavior of a series RL circuit for AC supply. So let's get started. Series RL circuit. In our previous videos, we have already seen the response of a resistor connected to an AC supply, the behavior of an inductor connected to an AC supply, but not ideally speaking, only resistor or inductor will be there in an AC supply. There will be combination of resistor and inductor, resistor and capacitor. So it's very important to see the behavior when they're connected together. So in this case, we are connected, uh, connecting resistor and inductor connect in this particular fashion. That is, they're connected end to end. That means they're connected in series. So whenever they're connected to AC supply, we're going to see various responses such as the phasor diagram, the impedance offered by the circuit, the current uh, nature and the waveforms associated with it, the power of uh, the series RL circuit, the power triangle associated with it, how it looks like and what is the power factor associated with them. So we're going to see each of them uh, uh, individually. Before that, in case you've not watched the response of uh, the behavior of a series uh, only with respect to uh, resistor and inductor separately when they're connected to AC supply, please do watch it. The link will be provided in the description once that is done you this is actually an extension of those previous concepts so you'll be able to grasp it much quicker and easily so potential difference across uh, a resistor vr so we are connecting an ac supply across a series connected rl circuit let us assume the voltage drop across the resistor as vr and voltage drop across inductor as vl so the voltage drop across a vr that is the resistor is given as i into r this is according to ohm's law the potential difference across the inductor that is at this point vl is equal to i into xl this is already derived in our previous videos. So once that is done, uh, for a pure resistor, we know that both current and voltage will be in phase with respect to each other. Uh, this is studied with respect to the behavior of a pure resistor. So that's why we will be saying VR is in phase with current IE. So VR is the phasor. So be very careful. All these are with respect to phasor. When AC supply gets started off, you have to remember everything with respect to the AC supply should be represented in phasor. That is, there will be a dash on top of every quantity that we are considering. So in case of a pure inductor, we know that current lags behind voltage uh, by 90 degree and that's why we would say VL leads current by uh, 90 degree that is I. So these are two important points uh, to get started off. Once you are clearly aware with what these two points are all about, uh, we will be able to correlate these points in each and every concept that we are going to see. So phase diagram steps for drawing phasor diagram so how do we start uh, with the drawing of a phasor diagram so a lot of students find this complicated but trust me this is very very simple we'll be going on through few steps and trust me this will be very easy for you guys so since same current flows through the series circuit uh, i bar is taken as reference phasor so since current remains constant in a series circuit uh, so we will be taking i bar as the reference so it is represented in this particular fashion and i'm labeling i always reference will be taken in this particular direction in, as in the horizontal axis so uh, I have represented it in this particular fashion now draw VR in phase with I so I am representing VR because as uh, it is known that voltage in a series uh, in, in case of a resistor will be in phase with respect to current uh, the point that is already seen before in our previous slide so that's the reason why VR and I in, are in phase with respect to each other now draw VL such that it leads I by 90 degree because VL leads current I by 90 degree so I will be drawing it in uh, this particular direction because they are supposed to be 90 degree 90 degree means they should be in perpendicular with respect to each other so I have represented this as VL so now now, in order to complete the circuit, according to the concept of impedance triangle, or um, in order to uh, use this, you can also call it as uh, Pythagoras theorem. So, uh, with respect to the vector sum, if you are adding, uh, enclosing this in the form of a triangle, you will be uh, labeling this as V bar. This is the sum of the phasors of V R and V L at this particular point, and uh, you will be uh, labeling the angle between these as phi, and uh, and we'll be marking the angle between i bar and v bar as phi so these are the five important steps and this is how the phasor diagram comes into existence so be very careful while drawing the phasor diagram uh, if this concept of phasor diagram is understood trust me you will be able to uh, solve any number of numericals with respect to this and these are very basics that you will be using throughout your life in electrical engineering so this is a very very important concept so once that is done next concept is impedance so what is the impedance offered in a series rl circuit that is a important aspect that we have to think about isn't it so uh, v is nothing but v, sum of vr plus vl that is 
already seen in our previous slide so can i write vr as i into r according to ohm's law and vl the voltage drop seen in our first slide that is j into xl uh, into i why i am representing uh, in terms of j is because it is a complex quantity uh, when with respect to uh, the inductors and uh, the capacitors the complex quantity uh, comes into picture so this is the real part and this is the imaginary part so i have represented it with respect to j xl into i so again i i into xl is the voltage drop across uh, the volt, uh, inductor that's why it's represented in this particular fashion so next step is i'll be taking i common i can write it as r plus j into xl i've written it in that particular fashion i've taken i common throughout so uh, what i am doing is i'll take i in the denominator here so v bar by i and you'll be left out with this particular term r plus j into xl so this is the impedance that is labeled and it is called as z bar so the impedance offered with respect to a series rl circuit is r plus j into xl so in uh, general uh, when you are representing an ac quantity we need to represent it with respect to magnitude and phasor so z bar is the phasor uh, so its magnitude is represented as z and its phase angle is represented as phi so how do we find the value of z and phi we will be considering the concept of impedance triangle what is impedance triangle so as we have already seen previously uh, the component uh, with respect to uh, this the adjacent value is r and this is xl and this is z because z is the summation of r plus xl and uh, we have already seen in phasor diagram as how do we uh, complete a triangle so that's the reason why z is written in this particular fashion and it is in this uh, hypotenuse side because z is equal to r plus j into xl so r plus j into xl is written in this particular fashion and it is called as impedance triangle now how do we find the value of z z is nothing but the square root of r square plus xl square magnitude is given in this particular fashion this is according to complex uh, uh, functions in uh, mathematics so based on that i'll be doing this so xl is nothing but uh, omega l j into omega l but j square it's always equal to square of a negative quantity will be equal to 1 so you'll be left out with omega square and l square so the impedance offered the magnitude of the impedance offered is equal to square root of r square plus omega l square omega square into l square very important relationship this will be used in a lot of problems that we solve so next is the magnet uh, the phase angle phi that is given by tan inverse of xl by r uh, so if you see this triangle phi is uh, tan phi is given as xl by r that is uh, the opposite by the adjacent value isn't it so phi is equal to tan inverse of omega l by r so this is the phase angle so this is one of the most important relationship with respect to phase angle you have to remember these two relations so this is the overall impedance offered with respect to magnitude and phase so when they're asking us to find the impedance you have to find the magnitude as well as the phase angle associated with it so i guess this concept is clear once this is done so uh, this is uh, one of our previous diagram that is the phasor diagram how to draw the phasor diagram that diagram is represented here because we need certain uh, aspects to look into this diagram so next concept is current so what is the current that is flowing through uh, in case of a series rl circuit from the phasor diagram it is clear that i lags behind v so i is lagging behind the voltage v by some angle say equal to 5 isn't it so uh, v and i if you see there is a phase angle difference that is i is lagging by some amount of uh, quantity say the angle equal to 5 so if the applied voltage in general v is equal to vm sin omega t so why is the uh, applied voltage always a sinusoidal waveform that is already covered in one of our uh, previous videos please do watch it so the supply voltage here will be equal to v is equal to vm sin omega t so i can be written as i m sin omega t minus 5 because i is lagging behind v and uh, the quantity the lagging nature is represented with respect to minus and uh, the angle in which it is lagging is phi that is why it is written as omega t minus phi if i is leading by uh, with respect to v then we will be writing omega t plus phi this is an important aspect so uh, where i m is nothing but v m by z this is according to ohm's law so v is equal to i r or v is equal to i z so you will be writing i m as equal to v m by z so uh, and the phase angle that is already derived in our previous uh, expression that is phi is equal to tan inverse of omega l by r so this is the current flowing i uh, so what is i m i m is v m by z and what is phi in this so if they ask you to find the current flowing through a series rl circuit giving the values of v m and z or giving the values of l and r you have to represent 
interpreted terms of this you'll find the value of i m you'll be finding the value of phi so uh, i guess this concept is clear once this is done what is the waveform associated with a series rl circuit so it's very simple uh, since the supply voltage is sinusoidal it will start from zero and uh, if you clearly observe i is lagging behind v by a certain angle say equal to phi so that's the reason why we will be delaying it and then it will start after some point of time we are not worried about the magnitude but this is how it, it is to be represented with respect to the voltage v so once this concept is uh, clear we'll be looking into our next concept very important concept for that matter that is power so we know the power uh, instantaneous power is given as the product of voltage and current that is v into i i'll be writing v is equal to vm sin omega t and i is equal to im sin of omega t minus phi that is obtained in our previous uh, slides so uh, what i'll be doing is vm im i'll join it together sin omega t is kept it as it is sin omega t minus phi is kept as it is so sin it, it looks like the product of sin a into sin b according to the formula i will be applying cos of a minus b minus cos of a plus b whole divided by 2 so that if you do that applying trigonometric functions formula you will be getting uh, this particular relationship next step is i'll multiply vm im cos phi by 2 and uh, vm im inside this particular quantity you will be getting these two quantities so what does this mean this is a constant part this is a fluctuating part why do i say this is a fluctuating part and this is a constant part see for a particular uh, phase i phi will be fixed for any particular circuit so if you are designing it uh, for a particular circuit a series rl circuit the value of phi will be fixed it will not keep on changing with respect to the circuit uh, but whereas uh, it has a quantity this qu term has a quantity called as omega omega is equal to 2 pi f that means frequency so frequency uh, with respect to this circuit when it has a frequency term uh, the cos of that component keeps on changing that means if when you have a cosine signal it keeps on changing uh, with respect to time isn't it even a sinusoidal waveform but cos phi remains constant uh, whatever is the value of phi the co cos of that component will be a constant say phi is equal to 0 cos phi is equal to 1 so 1 will be constant term so hence the entire term is a constant term whereas this entire term is a fluctuating term because it keeps it has a frequency component called as omega so the reason why we are t talking about this is because the average power is given as only with respect to this term vm im by 2 into cos phi the reason why we are not considering this term is uh, it is already mentioned in one of our previous videos we have al also seen what is average power all about so average of any particular quantity when it has a frequency component uh, positive and negative values get cancelled out and this will become equal to zero because cos of the frequency term will be equal to zero product of zero into something will be zero so this entire term will be zero will be left out with only vm im by 2 into cos phi this is called as the average power with respect to uh, series rl circuit this can be further written as vm by root 2 im by root 2 product of root 2 into root 2 will be 2 that's why i am splitting this in this particular fashion why am i splitting this in this particular fashion because i want to write it in terms of rms value so so vm by root 2 can be substituted as v and im by root 2 can be substituted as i cos phi will remain as it is so uh, average power is basically the product of the rms value of voltage the rms value of current and cos of the uh, power factor component that is phase difference phi so vi cos phi average power with respect to series rl circuit so this power is called as active power so be very careful students with respect to active power and reactive power active power is the actual power consumed in this particular circuit so uh, it is represented as vi cos phi so what is reactive power then so reactive power is generally represented as the product of voltage and reactive component of current so what is reactive component of current that is nothing but i m i into sin phi so uh, if you see the uh, previous uh, triangle that was shown so that is with respect to the sin component if you are talking about the reactive component is always associated with the sinusoidal quantity so you will be representing it as i sin phi that means what is the reactive power that is v i sin phi so uh, if someone asks you what is active power it will be represented by v i cos phi reactive power will be represented as v i sin phi um, it is very simple reactive power is not the actual power consumed in the circuit we have already seen that inductor does not consume any power in a circuit isn't it so uh, for that matter only resistor will be consuming power the resi power consumed by the resistor is nothing but vi cos phi that is generally represented and reactive power is due to the concept of the inductor that is there it is called a circulating power and that's the reason uh, why the concept of reactive power comes into existence due to the presence of an inductor so once these two points are clear the product of voltage and current that is with respect to uh, apparent power it is nothing but the product of the active power and reactive power we have found out p we have found out q so 
s is equal to p into q is nothing but the apparent power but since it is a uh, ac is in terms of ac with respect to phasor you have to take the magnitude if you are taking the magnitude it will always be square root of p square plus q square that is according to complex uh, functions in uh, mathematics so once this is done uh, we will be talking about power triangle this is a very important aspect with respect to uh, any uh, uh, electrical engineering aspect for series rl circuit uh, the reason is very simple we have already uh, come across impedance triangle so we are uh, looking at cos phi for this impedance triangle if you look at cos phi that is nothing but r by z adjacent by the hypotenuse so r by z we'll be writing it in this particular fashion so uh, we know that v is equal to iz these two are important relations the reason why we are doing this is this is the power triangle as i already told you apparent power is the, nothing but the sum of uh, p square and q square previously when we derived this we found out z is equal to square root of r square plus xl square similarly i'll be writing it as equal to p square plus q square over here so what can be done now p is equal to vi cos phi so v value can be substituted as zi over here and cos phi can be substituted as r by z so you'll be getting p is equal to i square r so as i told you it uh, p is nothing but the active power it is always associated with the resistance that is there in the circuit that is why the concept of active power is there uh, how it is proved you only see, if you see this term carefully you will be having i square r uh, you don't have any inductor quantity uh, that is associated with the circuit uh, how, similarly if you have uh, q that is reactive power v i sin phi v is substituted as z i and uh, a, a, a sin phi with respect to this circuit if you again apply sin phi that is nothing but xl by z so uh, i and i will be multiplied i square z and z gets cancelled you will be having i square into xl so this is the reactive power if you clearly see the impedance xl is there in this particular uh, quantity and that's why reactive power is always associated with the inductor that is there in the circuit so this gives you a clear picture now s is equal to v into i it is nothing but the product of voltage and current apparent power so uh, voltage is written as zi into i that is i square into z so in general s is uh, nothing but the uh, product of i square into z uh, this follows uh, ohm's law you can say that because uh, the power associated with this generally is given as i square r here the impedance is z so you will be writing it as i square z so why is this required in case they don't give you what is the value of uh, uh, v or the power factor you know the value of i and r you can directly find the active power by using this formula and reactive power by using this formula and apparent power by using this formula that's the reason why we are looking at an alternative formula it's just simplification and we'll be arriving at this particular point so these are very important formulas please do make a note while solving problems these are very very important so once this is done our next concept will be power factor so it is already defined power factor is defined uh, with respect to uh, the cosine of the angle uh, with the that is the phase difference between voltage and current so cosine of the phase difference between voltage and current is the uh, definition of power factor so can we write from voltage triangle so what i've done is i've considered all the triangles that are already derived earlier the voltage triangle the impedance triangle uh, the impedance triangle over here and then the power triangle over here so power factor is with respect to voltage triangle is vr by v so cosine cos 5 is nothing but vr by adjacent by hypotenuse i'll be writing vr by v so for impedance triangle power factor is r by z for power triangle the power factor is p by s so power factor in general uh, has one particular definition that is cosine of the angle between the voltage and current but in case if they ask you if they give the value of r by z or if they give the value of p and s and ask you the power factor you will be still able to find it out by applying these formulas so these are very important formulas make a note of it as well so in case of a series rl circuit the power factor is lagging in nature since the current lags behind the voltage by an angle equal to phi as already we have seen earlier in our previous uh, slides that i is lagging behind v by a certain angle equal to phi so uh, in general we will be saying uh, when a series rl circuit is connected to an ac supply the power factor associated will be lagging in nature we will be calling it as lagging power factor and the value of uh, the phase difference phi will be from 0 to 90 degree 
you cannot say it is exactly equal to 0 or exactly equal to 90 degree because of the presence of the inductor it will be some somewhere between them so this is an important conclusion power factor is lagging in nature for a series rl circuit when connected to an ac supply i guess this concept of series rl circuit is clear once you are clearly aware of this concept you will be able to uh, apply these formulas and solve a lot of numericals related to it in case you have any questions related to this concept feel free to reach out uh, by writing in your questions in the comment section below if you like this video please do like it and share it to maximum people and subscribe to our channel for regular updates thanks for watching this video please do keep supporting thank you